G'day, I'm James. Over 20 years ago, then UK Minister for School Standards, Stephen Byers, was asked in a live interview, quickly, what's seven times eight? Now that's a lot of pressure on a live interview out of the blue, and he mistakenly said, oh, uh, seven times eight, uh, uh, it's 54. And then became the laughing stock of the media at that time. The school Mercy for School Standards did not know what seven times eight was. Everyone was expecting him to say, cold, please, give the answer 56. Which says a lot about what society expects of mathematics. That mathematics is all about computation, speed computation, and being correct the first time. To me, that doesn't excite me. That's not mathematics, that's, that's speed computation. Okay, I, I can imagine it can be exciting and fun to do and know, but it's not actually mathematics. In fact, he could have answered this question in different ways. Um, he may have said, oh, oh, seven times eight, that's the tricky one. So he's giving an emotional response. He's being a human being if he said something like that. And he might pull out something like, um, oh, I remember my teacher telling me that, think of five, six, seven, eight. Uh, within those four consecutive numbers, about seven times eight equals 56. Okay, that's cute. Um, that's kind of like a strange little coincidence about how numbers happen to work for seven times eight. But it gives me nothing to hold on to for other products. That's one down and what? Ugh, a lot more to go. What would have really impressed me if he answered this way. Seven times eight. Oh my goodness, I'm under pressure. So um, that's always the tricky one. Everyone gets that one wrong. Um, okay, seven times eight, seven times eight. But what do I know? I do know that seven times seven is 49. For some reason, I've got the square numbers in my head. So seven times eight, seven groups of, uh, eight groups of seven must be 49 with an extra seven. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, 56. If he went that sort of process, I would have been incredibly impressed. He, was, he would demonstrate to the world right then, it's okay not to know answers, but then you can find out, you can do something about it, you can problem solve, and that was beautiful thinking about structure. So, so, if we're working with our students and we expect them to memorize this table and know it cold, can we at least make it a conversation about structure? Now, because there's other ways to get these things we hear. You can play fabulous dice games and card games and so forth. But at some point, we often get to the point where students need to just have flashcards and get them in their heads. All right, then please make it a meta conversation. Let's be very human. If our task is to memorize this table, please make it about mathematics, about thinking your way through a challenge and what can I do to make my life easier? Because our challenge is right now to memorize everything in this table. And right now I have an emotional response to that because that feels like a lot of stuff to get in my head. That feels overwhelming. In fact, I might ask, the natural question is, how many products do I need to get in my head? You look at this and say, okay, well it's, uh, what, 10 columns and 10 rows, it must be 10 times 10, it must be 100 products I have to memorize. Whoa, whoa. Except, except, I just did one of them. I just said that 10 times 10 was 100. So I know one of them actually says only 99 things I have to memorize. <laughs> That's not much better, not much better. And then you look at that, okay, so I have to memorize 99 things, because apparently I have 10 times 10 already in my head. That's great. So how am I going to memorize the 99 elements in this table that I don't already have? And you notice things about this table, when I mean, you stare at it for a while, there's actually a lot of structure. I mean, it is the multiplication table, and there's a lot of structure in the numbers. For example, you do see that 5 times 4, 20, and 5 times 4 this way, like row by column or column by row, are the same answer. Uh, 5 times 4 is the same as 4 times 5. Uh, 8 times 2, 8 times 2 is the same as 2 times 8, or here, yeah, 2 times 8, 2 times 8. So actually, there's a lot of repeats going on. Which is great, because if everything down here is repeated with everything up here, you can kind of see that uh, this lower triangular half matches this upper triangular half. So actually it means I have to memorize half of 100 things, or half of 99 things. Way better. Oh, except I paused. Half? Is it half? Well, if you think about it, okay, you've got these numbers down here, which are like 1 by 1, 2 by 2, 3 by 3, 4 by 4, 5 by 5 on this diagonal. So they're all the square numbers. Ah, it's actually the things below that diagonal. All these numbers down here match all the numbers up there, so it's not quite half. Oh, so how many numbers do I have to memorize now? Well, it's everything in this upper triangular and this diagonal. So how many numbers is that? Okay, now I've got myself another little puzzle. Um, right, how many numbers is that? Well, okay, so I know there's 10 numbers here on this diagonal, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, all up to 10 squared. That's 10 numbers, which means, oh, means those two things are 90 numbers together, they're the same as those, that each of these must be half of 90. So I've now got 45 numbers plus these 10 numbers to memorize. I now realize I only have to memorize 55 numbers. That's better than 99 or 100. But I've already got that one, so it's really 54 numbers. Actually, a lot of people have the square numbers. People are fascinated by the square numbers. A lot of people have 1 times 1 in their head, 2 times 2 in their head, 3 times 3 in their head, 4 times 4 in their head, 5 times 5 in their head is very common. Um, these upper ones get a bit uh, scary. I mean, 6 times 6 is 36. 
Actually, I had that one in my head because 36 happens to me by, to be my favorite number if, everyone has, if you have a favorite number. Why? Well, think about it. six times six. If I've got six rows of six dots, that's literally what I mean by square number because they make, take that many pebbles, you can make a perfect square out of it. Is that six rows of six? Yep, that's 36. So 36 is a square number. It's also a triangular number because look at this. One dot, then two dots, then three dots, then four dots, then five dots, then six dots, then seven dots, then eight dots. If you count up all the dots I just did, it's also 36. It's also what mathematicians call a triangular number. So it's both square and triangular. I like to call it squangular. In fact, it's the first squangular number. I mean, I guess one is both square and triangular, but it's the first interesting squangular number. I love 36 as squangular. Okay, so for some reason 36 sticks in my head because it's squangular. By the way, now you kind of want to know what's the next squangular number. I'll give it away. 1,225 is the next squangular number. These things are rare. What's the one after that? Oh, okay, that's a different video. That's a different video. So I didn't have, I didn't have 36 in my head. 6 times 6 is 36 because I like the squangular numbers. Um, a lot of people have 7 times 7 in their heads. It's 49. I guess 8 times 8 and 9 times 9, they're always tricky. 8 times 8 and 9 times 9. So maybe I won't have those ones in my head. That means, okay, so maybe, maybe I shouldn't circle those. Or oh, I do have 10 by 10 in my head. So I've got in my head right now everything here circled. And I don't need all that. So actually, there's less in the table I need right now. What's that? Uh, 6 times 8 times 64, 81. Okay, bingo. So I've got all I have to memorize now. I've made it much less. That stuff and this stuff. Um, actually, I have another question. Is it obvious that 5 times 4 should be the same as 4 times 5? And 8 times 2 should be the same as 2 times 8? Is it really obvious that 5 times 4 and 4 times 5 are symmetrical? Oh my gosh, before I even get to my work here, I'm actually got all these cool questions. 5 times 4, that's 5 groups of 4. Think about it, 5 groups of 4. There's a group of 4, there's a group of 4, here's a group of 4, here's a group of 4, and here's a group of 4. 5 groups of 4, as opposed to this, which is different. It's 4 groups of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They look like very different pictures. Actually, why should 5 times 4 be 4 times 5? I, mean, I know they're both 20, I know they are the same. But philosophically, why? Huh, okay, well I'm just sort of full of distractions here on this little, little memorization game. Well, the thing is that you people realized, if you actually draw your pictures in a more systematic way, four, five groups of four, do it very systematically. There's one group of four, a second group of four, a third group of four, a fourth group of four, a fifth group of four. There's five groups of four when I look this way. And then you realize, oh, if you turn your head around 90 degrees and look, say, from there, one group of five, two groups of five, three groups of five, four groups of five. The same picture turned around is four groups of five. Look at this way, you get four, five groups of four. Look this way, you get four groups of five. It's the same picture. The answers have to be the same. And I only have to say the word 20 to know they have to be the same because it's going to be the same picture. By the same token, whatever 103 times 107 is, I know I could do 103 rows um, of 170 columns. Look this way, look this way, I'll get the same answer, 107 times 103, whatever that turns out to be. So without even knowing what the answer is, I can argue that, ah, the bottom half of the te multiplication table matches the top half. All right, so where am I? Where am I? How many things do I have to memorize? I still haven't memorized anything yet. Um, I know the square numbers, I know, except for those two, and I know that one. Um, okay, I bet I know a lot of stuff. Everyone knows their one times tables, so I need to memorize those. I've got all those known. All right, so that's easy. I've got, I don't have to memorize that much. Um, actually, everyone seems to know their 10 times tables. Uh, 1 times 10, 2 times 10, 3 times 10. So people know that. So actually, I need to memorize this much. There's way less I have to memorize. Uh, what, else I, what else don't I have to memorize? Um, well, a lot of people actually do know their 2 times tables. Um, so actually, I've got those in my head, all my 2 times tables. So actually, there's less I have to memorize. Wow, this is great. Um, what else do people tend to know? Well, here's what I'd do with a student. At some point, I'd circle all the ones that you kind of know. A lot of people, for some reason, seem to know that 3 times 5 is 15. That just seems to stick in people's heads. Actually, 3 times 4 is 12, sticks in people's heads, heads a lot. Actually, a lot of the 3 times table sticks in people's heads. So that's usually, usually known for a lot of people. What else do people know? Uh, 4 times 5 is 20. After that little talk just then about why 4 times 5 is the same as 5 times 4, I've definitely got 20 in my head. Uh, 4 times 6, people get stuck on that one. 4 times 7, people get stuck on this one. Um, a lot of people do know that 4 times 8 is for 32 for some reason, but maybe you're one of those or not one of those people. That's all fine. In fact, go through with students 
Which ones do you know? Do you just happen to have in your head for whatever reason? And it could be maybe you know 7 times 9 is 63. So right now it looks like, for me, what's left for me to memorize is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 things. 14 things. I went down from 100 to 14. That now seems more tractable. But let's still make it a meta conversation. For example, most everyone on this planet gets that one wrong. That is, I think they even did studies. That this is like the universal product that goes wrong. People don't have seven times eight in their heads. In which case, then you ask yourself, why is seven times eight so hard? Why don't I have 56 in my head? And they say, okay, I don't know. It's probably an emotional block or it just seems awkward. It just feels clunky. And then you say, well, what could I do to figure it out under pressure? And you say to yourself, okay, let me have a little thought process about seven times eight and you can do what I wish Stephen Byers did. And you say, well, okay, seven groups of eight. Oh, seven groups of eight. That's hard. Seven groups of eight. No, no, no. Let's think of this as eight groups of seven because eight groups of seven is very close to seven groups of seven, which I haven't have in my head is 49. And once I know that seven groups of seven is 49, then eight groups of seven would be 49 plus an extra seven. And I have to do a little bit of thinking there, but that's going to be 56. So then I've now made it a meta conversation. Take all the ones that seem hard for whatever reason, emotional, mental, just clunky. Uh, five times six, I don't seem to have 30 in my head. I don't know why I don't have 30 in my head. But once I've said that, actually, I'll probably have 30 in my head from now on. But you can anchor it to say five times five. Uh, this five times eight. Oh, what can I do to make that easier for myself? Well, I've got five times six in my head. Maybe I'll get five times eight in my head. Uh, you can actually have it a meta conversation. And as soon as you start playing this and realize, let's take away the emotional weight of having to memorize a hundred things and say, no, there's no way. There's no way I'm going to memorize a hundred things and realize actually it's way, way less. Then you can take a deep breath and it only comes down to memorizing 14 things, 10 things, 12 things, discussing them, but why those numbers are hard actually makes them stick in your head. Plus, plus what we're really teaching here, I don't care about knowing these things. We've just gone through a process of making something seem daunting and overwhelming manageable. Welcome to the world of dealing with life skills, dealing with life's problems, and trying to break them down to make them manageable. This is actually a perfect opportunity for teaching life skills. Just don't make it a joyless drill and skill type thing with flashcards and without the joy and without the thinking. This is grand, this is beautiful. Kind of like the multiplication table. And in fact, you might even want to go to the 12 times 12s because why not? I bet you get up there. In fact, I remember Peter in grade five back in my days of school, he went all the way up to the 14 times 14s tables because he liked playing with the structure. He knew how to go from the 12s to the 13s by the structure he already had in his head and how to go from the 13s to the 14s by the structure he already had in his head. It is just lovely, actually. He was playing with structure. Clever Peter. I admire him till this day.